call this meeting to order for September the 19th, 2023. Result of the agenda for the September 19th, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Council Boychuk, seconded by Council Midwood. All in favor? That's carried. Resolved the minutes of the September the 5th, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, moving down to communications. We have a letter there. Uh, this is just, again, just for communications, but um, any comments on that, uh, CAO Poole? Uh, yeah, this was for the uh, asset management. And, uh, sorry. Sorry, I, I just sat down here. I'm, I gotta get organized. Okay. Yeah, this was for the, we applied for a grant to get our asset management uh, program done and we've been denied. So we will be applying for that again in 24. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Medwood. I didn't have a chance to uh, look into my goodie bag from the last uh, AMMs, but I had shared, um, there was a financial asset management company that had a booth set up there, and I shared the information. Did you by chance follow up with them? Because I want to say they, I think, offered some potential funding as well, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, we, we pay them to apply for this grant. So I got my own quote for them to do it themselves. But what they also do is apply for grants. So next year, I'll definitely consider having them apply. But we, we will have to pay. Okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. Uh, 6.2. Result of the building and demolition permits 4523 through 5223 with a total estimated value of $60,879 be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? This is carried. 7.3. Result that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Falvik, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Paul, go ahead. Um, the sludge sampling at the lagoon. What do we got for more detailed info on that? Uh, we push a tube into the ground, or into the sludge and then send it away to get uh, tested. And uh, I just did a sample, so I don't have the test results. But okay. That's tied in with that EMF 1000. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, two things. In your report, you have uh, contacted Manitoba Hydro regarding uh, relocating a street light. Where, where's that? Uh, that's on 2nd, or north of 2nd Street North. There's a business that wants to have a light moved. So I'm just calling them to see how much that'll cost and I can let the business know. Okay, so they'll move it over one lot because they're taking out a house and adding more driveway. Okay, so I assume the business would be looking at that cost or eating that cost. Okay, and second question regarding uh, our capital projects. Um, where are we with the ones that you're responsible for. I know for multiple years we have a pretty ambitious list sometimes and things get punted from one year to the next and things are, we get winding down here at the end of the year and there's still a number on that list what I can see on CFO Benita's financial stuff. So um, I was wondering if you could provide us a written report for the next meeting yeah. as to the status and the timeline of where um, those products will be and anticipated start and end dates. Yeah, for sure. I know it's, it's always good to, like, to, to save costs and stuff like that when we have our own workforce doing it, but it's also when we're uh, budgeting for capital projects and uh, it's not appropriate to be kicking them down the road from one year to the next because we run out of uh, days to do it. We may need to uh, 
yeah, maybe a little bit more expensive to go right off the bat when a private contractor can do it, but that, the more we delay it, the projects usually become more expensive no matter, so we pay the same amount at the end of the day anyway. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thanks. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> 7.2, result of the August 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Ban Report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3, result of the 2023 August Protective Services Report be received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor uh, Medwood, discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a couple questions. Uh, the vehicle fire, 083023, the invoicing for 1594.2, that went to MPI, I'm assuming? Or does that go to the. They go to MPI. If it's a registered manageable vehicle, they go to MPI. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I can confirm that with the chief. Do we need to let them in? Uh, the CFO was in, the chief was going to be delayed, so he's doing a test right now. Councilor Bedwood. And under animal control, what, and this might not be able to be answered since um, fire chief's not here, but what are the corrective actions that were implemented? Maybe. I would say that I would have to review the report from the bylaw officer, but uh, this would be very general. If he's lumping all 12 complaints into one, so it could be barking dogs. That means he met with the, the owner to tell them there is a possible fine if we get called again, things like that. I can't say that that's what it was for sure, but again, we can, we can provide that if you'd like. Yes, a little bit of clarity, please. For the discussion, all in favor? Carried. Moving on to 7.4, Council and CAO reports. Start with Councillor Bobbitt. Uh, not too much to report, just I met with uh, Director Harvey on <coughs> Kelsey Drive, you know, that's down by the bus garage there. And has some issues with some pavement missing there. That is actually a MIT highway. I uh, just uh, haven't had a chance to get to talk to Mr. Harvey yet, but one of the thoughts that came up instead of the town bearing all the costs and uh, I understand that the town had paved it but at the same time MIT is actually their road maybe if they we contacted them and asked if they'd donate the code mix and we could apply it so it's something to look in the future and that's about it okay Councilor okay. Medwood um I had a services for seniors meetings two of them uh we they have a trade show coming up on Saturday, but I'll speak more to that in council privilege. Attended the cow meeting, and I did my second session of the community safety well-being training on Zoom yesterday. And some of my takeaways from there: one, doing it through Zoom, there's a lot of participants from well, Swan River, Portage, Dauphin, the Paw, and we also have member uh, people participating from New Brunswick, Alberta, BC, and Ontario. So it's really nice to kind of see the different perspectives and how far different communities are at. Main takeaways from the recent training was not about controlling, but rather partnering with the community. So instead of governments being the controlling entity, we're literally partnering with the community on these uh, plans. Town halls are rarely working that seems to be across the board uh, and it identified the need to go to people in the community and meet them where they feel safe to obtain more accurate data because a lot of our minority groups or LGBTQ um, things like that they don't really feel comfortable necessarily coming to a town hall setting especially when they tend to well, in our experience, 
you get one person with a loud voice and it can kind of foobar everything for what your plans and intentions were and then nobody feels comfortable or safe speaking up per se. Uh, being prepared to hear hard truths about our own community from marginal, marginalized groups and sectors and also be willing to share and publish those truths within the plans and identify that they exist and that's part of what the plan is about is working towards creating a safer community for all. Communities who have community safety well-being plans in place are using them as guides to their strategic plans on municipal, nonprofit, and or organizational levels. So everybody together in the community is kind of referencing that document and plan in their own strategic plans. And then sending emails, especially mass or group emails, is not enough for all organizations or entities. And it was suggested or recommended that if you really want a particular group or government or First Nations or MMF to be part of a meeting or a planning session, to extend a phone call and personally speak to them, invite them, and maybe even explain to them why you value their presence at the table and go kind of that little extra step. It takes a little bit more time because you might have to do that for a few groups or organizations, but that might be what gets them to join us at the table and start talking. And I think that's about it for me. Okay. Also, Boyd Shop. Um, so, I was supposed to attend the Swan Valley Planning District meeting, which uh, got cancelled. We were waiting any date. That didn't involve uh, farming uh, operations being stopped for it. Um, had a Chamber of Commerce meeting on September 14th. And, um, Wishing the Swan Valley Stampeders uh, best of luck on their home opener this Saturday, this September 23rd, and congratulating them on a 25 year milestone. That's it for me. Okay. Council White. Not too busy. On the, the 6th, we met with the, the Dean of, of Health from uh, UCN, and uh, we looked at the possibilities of how to support health care aids. There's a, a nice article in today's Star and Times, if you have a chance to read that. And the thing that evolved and it keeps popping up forever is how do we disseminate this information? How do we tell the community that it's out there? Yeah, radios work, yeah, everything works, but it's not, we have to be more creative in getting the information to the public. On the uh, 12th, uh, I uh, had a meeting with Mr. Harvey over there, a brief meeting, and uh, he's been exemplary in sharing the information relative to the work that's doing at the Lagoon quality of that work, and it's, it's very scientific. I said, oh yes, some uh, chemist will have to look at that because it's not going to be me. But as I understand it, the, the direct numbers of savings will be not, not far away, and as important to me, uh, the bouquet is, looks to be gone. And that's an unscientific statement. And the 14th, the medical service team met again with the uh, Dean of Health from um, the PAW and the director from Swan Valley. And we, we, we talked about ways to make, uh, improve our health care aid system. We're 56 health care aids short. We have 10 empty beds in the personal care home. It's really unacceptable. So we've, we've got a protocol that we hope will, we will subsidize the training of, uh, of 10 health care aids. And, and you don't have to put it, it costs roughly 5500 so that's 55000 You don't have to give it all at once. You give them 500 now, and they finish a third of the course if they finish. Then they start the second, third, then they pay another thousand. And if they stop in between, they don't get any more money. So we like that. I went to the Chamber of Commerce meeting. I want to compliment uh, Councillor Morio and uh, Reeve Gade. Uh, lots of stuff happening over there, guys. It's all positive. You're trying to make things happen. Lots of problems, of course, like it ain't like with us. But you're working forward. You were there and you, you spoke your mind and you have good ideas. And you share them emphatically. So I appreciate that. Then after the Chamber of Commerce meeting, the medical service meeting team came back here and we met uh, with the goal of firming up those monies and we've agreed to putting that 56,000 plus or minus a dollars into health care aids. There's a big, there's a news release in the paper, there's uh, Mr. Gate is putting it on his radio five times a, a day, as I understand it, for free. And I appreciate that, thank you Mr. Gate. 
and the UCN is following up with something we hope, and I'm sure they will. Then uh, on the 15th, that uh, was the 15th, uh, community involvement, uh, medical service. Well, on the 15th and 9.30 in the, in the morning, uh, Your Worship, uh, myself and uh, Mr. Gate got together with the Star and Times to do a photo op to try to bring attention to the need of health care aids that we need. And of course, those monies can help anywhere. So we did a Photoshop op, baby Photoshop my stomach. It's on the first page, the back of the first page in today's paper. And thank you, Mr. Bergen. I think you, uh, you, you, you pulled it together very nicely. All the comments were appropriate. So that's where that one was going. And then I had an encounter with a, with a CT, husband of a CT training, training person. He was pretty aggressive with me. That's fine. He says they should train here. The CT, whatever they're called, the CT training people should come here and then they don't have to travel to Brandon. And this young lady working on my heart monitor this morning says, Dwayne, they can't train here because if they have, have a CT scan here, we don't have the CT scan, they can't train here. So if they wait till the scan gets here, it's a four month training, we'd have to wait another four months. So he said, we have to train afar. So when it comes here, we're ready to use it. A little simple principle, I admit it. And at the end, I'll talk about the other thing I'm not allowed to talk about right now. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilor Paul. Okay, so um, just actually just last night we had a rise meeting. Um, lots of great discussion with them, a meeting with all like with all the municipalities there. There's there's a few of us, and I think it was it's a great it's a great thing um, promoting the valley. They're really working on promoting the valley, and they got some really great ideas coming our way. So um, we attended the Cal meeting. Um, Oh, there's been, there's been lots of discussion, lots of discussion on the safety. Um, you hear it quite a bit from ratepayers right now on the safety and what's happening with safety. Um, I know I hear it probably two or three times a day, just what's going on there. I have a few people stopping in. Um, we also met with CM, I met with CMHA and uh, Director James Whitley. Lot, and there's lots of things happening in the future for them. They've got new jobs happening. They've got, um, I think, Almost nine positions are going to be hiring out here right away shortly, um, so that's going to be that's going to be some big growth over there. Um, they are moving into across from or just down from uh, the assessment branch. That's where they're moving into um, for most of their positions. Um, they the thing is though the meet off main will be closing as of the middle of October, so that no longer will be um, around. They will no longer be providing meals downtown there. So, so yeah, so um, we attended a few library meetings and lots of things happening over there too. So, okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Morano. One of the couple things um, while I was away, but the first one was that the planning district uh, meeting that's been previously mentioned was rescheduled. Um, and along with uh, the medical services uh, professional recruiting committee, uh, Councillor White and myself will be heading down to Steinbeck um, on a recruiting adventure uh, to entice or convince or twist, whatever you want to call it, um, any medical residents that are completing their training uh, to consider uh, coming to Swan River to set up practice here. So hopefully um, we're successful with that. But We'll see how good our negotiating and selling of the Valley skills are and how receptive they are to that. So, um, again, um, won't rehash it, but the, again, the committee's working on the nursing aid um, incentives. And we also have um, been able to secure um, a one return of service for a, a VN to come into the community. So, another return of service on that front has been secured. Um, and then finally, um, it was talked about a little bit previously in last week's newspaper, but uh, um, it was finally uh, formally agreed to at our neighbors to the west, that's New Valley, or municipality Swan Valley West, uh, to have uh, heads of council sign the agreement to create the Swan Valley Fire Board. Um, so just working on the details of that to get a formal date for a, an ad event. Um, to commemorate uh, that event, uh, um, which is, uh, I guess, a milestone for the Valley to accomplish. So, mm -hmm. um, more details on that once we get those 
ironed out. And that's all I got. Okay. You're raising your hand over uh, here. Rosuzo, uh, Deputy Mayor Mario, is being uh, humble. He is directly involved for designing all the funding templates for funding programs for recruitment. He's designed our budget for the, for the medical service medium. He's looking at uh, incentives, et cetera, and it's so well done. It is multiple, multiple, multiple pages long. And David, it's appreciated. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, actually on that note, you know, the I have to say the medical recruitment team, you know, I've been to a few of the meetings, but they've been doing such a, a great job. And I mean, like the, the partnership that we have with the other municipalities now, the input from other municipalities has grown and, and it's, it's becoming a very uh, valuable uh, team as far as working with recruiting right now with the, with the project with recruiting aides and so forth. But uh, it's, it's growing and it's, it's now, be, we're now starting to use those funds and what they were really needed to, to be used for, and uh, and it's it's going to be a good thing for for healthcare in, in town. So I thank the group for for all the work that they're doing. Rise. I had a meeting last night. Uh, uh, again, another good group. We have a lot of representation from all the municipalities of the valley on board uh, and committed themselves to being a part of it and, and moving forward. Um, uh, there's still a lot of things that we're, we're to, you know, t talking about what we need to do and, and focus on, but one of the things is a, a booklet that we're designing um, that will be able to get out in, in, outside the valley to encourage uh, growth in, in um, uh, business or organizations and, and, and invite them to come and, and set up shop in the Swan Valley. So. Um, I, I can't wait to see what this book looks like. We, we have some pre, uh, uh, you can see the ideas of what that might look like, but uh, we'll keep you up to date on that. So Rise is again uh, working good together uh, again with the whole group. Uh, last night I also had a foundation meeting, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation meeting, um, and some of the work that we do. Um, is obviously purchasing some uh, new equipment for our health facilities of the valley and um, we just received a new Broda lift chair that was really needed in the hospital so that's in there and the staff are very thankful for that piece of equipment and also we are purchasing some new chairs in the PCH and in the um, uh, Benito Healthcare Center so uh, again monies that are donated and, and used uh, to uh, purchase equipment that otherwise we, not, we may not have uh, to make those people's lives a little bit easier in our care facilities. So Super. all good all the way around. Uh, CO Poole, do you have anything to report? Uh, yeah, sorry I don't have a written report on the agenda. Uh, I am working on the, with Dr. Wayne Tennessee, the <clears throat> getting an RFP in process for replacing the hangers at the pool. So council will see that with a resolution to move forward. Uh, we're going through a hiring process to replace clerical staff. Uh, have been holding staff meetings just to update them on, on the transition. Uh, held a manager's capital uh, capital plan report so as it's been requested tonight that report will be coming for council to 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 get a summary of where we are in our 23 uh, capital plan just finalizing our land sale docs with the lawyer and reviewing our demolition processes with the fire chief because there's a another uh, house that's up for demolition the council will see uh, we are working on our 2024 budget document uh, so in a month's time or so we should be reviewing that with council maybe a little longer and then speaking of the health foundation we do have that question regarding the condition for our responsibilities to to be ready when the CT scan does come to Swan River, and and spent or have spent a lot of time on the the grant bylaw, the unsightly bylaw, and the accommodation tax bylaw, which you'll see tonight. Okay, perfect. All right, so moving on eight.
resultant Swan Valley Historical Museum Incorporated compiled financial information for the year ended December 31st, 2022 be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2 Results of the October 3rd, 2023 regular scheduled meeting of council be rescheduled to take place Wednesday, October the 4th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in council chambers. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? I don't recall getting an email. Why are we changing the meeting? Ah, uh, that's election night. Provincial election night. I knew there would be something. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Result the OSS recycling contract be extended to March the 19th, 2024. Moved by Councillor Medwood. Seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. So it's extended at the same price. Yeah. For the discussion, oh, sorry, Councilor Medwood. Yeah, I have a question. If we're extending it, is it at all possible to see if we could look at doing pickup and moving it to once every three weeks just to see one, what the cost difference would be and whether that suits the needs of the community versus the 45 plus thousand dollars a month we're paying for by weekly pickup? Yeah, I could reach out to them and see what the cost difference would be. Okay. Council Boychuk? I'm going to tell you if it moves every three weeks, there's going to be a lot of recyclables at my house going in garbage because I barely make the two weeks up and it's puking over the top. It's not big enough already. So I don't know what the ratio is for retired families or, or non, you know what I mean, like two person households versus, uh, you know, four to five person households are in, as the ratio goes. But I'm assuming if the ratio is higher on the family end of it, that that would probably not be a very good thing for our recycling to extend it that way. Okay. Um, yeah, it's getting away from the uh, extension on the resolution, but we can ask Mr. Harvey and then at a COW meeting, perhaps maybe uh, council can hear any information on that. Uh, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, 8.4. Whereas the town of Swan River received a generous donation from Dennis Cole Estate of $5,000 to be used for parks. Uh, department and where a skate sharpening is a limited service to our citizens there is a need in our community uh, for such service and the Swan River Centennial Arena is part of the recreation department that administers parks therefore be resolved a $5,000 donation uh, funds be used to purchase a skate sharpener from Spax Spax Sparks, Sparks? Okay, that doesn't say Sparks, but know, Sparks Hockey it. Incorporated. Uh, be it further resolved that a commemorative plaque be uh, to honor Mr. Cole's contribution be purchased and erected in the Centennial Arena. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Go ahead. Uh, basically, a question on procedure since uh, Council previously passed a resolution to allocate these funds to the playground. Do we need to rescind that previous resolution, or would this one supersede that? Uh, Mr. Paul? That, that's correct. This one would supersede that. We, we can rescind it if council wishes, but this one would take precedent. Okay. okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I just want to confirm that it's going to include the ability to sharpen figure skates. Yeah, it was an extra cost to the skate sharpener, but we had that added on for Mr. Cowles. But that was a suitable use of his donation to include the figure skating attachment. Yeah. Absolutely, because both his daughters did yeah. figure skating. Councillor White. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you would send a note from council, maybe get the mayor to sign it to the uh, to the family, saying I sure appreciate that, just a little... We were reaching out for some of those family contacts today. Mm -hmm. um, we got them near the end of the day, so that was exactly our plan. 
Uh, we're ho also hoping to um, join up with uh, the figure skating club when they do their can skate. They do a uh, Carissa Cowell Day. I think, believe they've got it planned for October 3rd this year. So we're hoping to do something with them. Take a picture of the Star Times come and, and write a nice letter on behalf of Council Recreation Department. Perfect. Something Thank like you. that. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Uh, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, 8.5. As all the shop stop signs uh, be installed at the 1st uh, North and 13th Avenue North intersections to create a three way stop. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Go ahead. I have questions and they'll be the same for 8, 5, and 8, 6. Um, I missed the, uh, I was late for the uh, Cal meeting, so it might have been mentioned there, but do we have stop signs? Is there going to be any cost for purchasing signs? We have stop signs. You do? Yeah. Okay, and is there any cost for installing them? Uh, it'll be minimal. Probably just like public traffic. works labor type yeah. costs? Okay. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, 8.6 resulted uh, that stop signs be installed at the 3rd Street North and 13th Avenue North intersection to create a four way stop. Moved by Councillor Midwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick and then Deputy Mayor Morio. So I, I have no problem with the resolutions. I just learned why we need resolutions to put stop signs on. Go ahead. Uh, when it comes to traffic safety, then we just install the stop signs. Uh, these ones already have stop signs, but there was um, to turn them to four-way. That becomes more of a political question. So like we had one where they were happy with stop sign, wanted it removed. So that's why we brought these to council for resolution because it's it's already controlled that this is additional control to slow down traffic and divert traffic. So that's why you brought it to council so that uh, you guys can discuss it and then if it's approved then... Okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, then, then they know that we knew about the decision and yeah. we've actually talked about it instead of somebody making the decision with us uh, not knowing about it. Go ahead. Um, in regards to this intersection, 3rd Street North and 13th Avenue North, um, the discussion of stop signs at this intersection has been at the council table a number of times over the years and it's been back and forth where the stop signs were on first street or pardon me third street north and then they were flipped or vice versa and then the discussion uh, but uh, ever since uh, that street 13th street north was redone with the water sewer and that whole street was resurfaced it uh, been a lot of concern and complaints and uh, from residents in that area that uh, the length of that street now being so smooth uh, creates a freeway uh, type environment for traffic to, to go through there so and with the, the bush on the high school side it creates some minimal visibility issues also so it's purely a, a safety issue there to slow some traffic down and for the protection of our, our motors in the community to, uh, establish a four-way stop in that area along with the school zone there. So. Okay. For the discussion, go ahead. There would be some uh, advanced notification, something in the paper, for example, and maybe some flags before the stop sign showing that there's something different up there? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, 8.7. Result of the strategy plan for 2022-26 be received and approved. Moved by Council Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Medwood and then Councillor Boychuk. I just want to point out that with our strategy plan and moving forward, should we vote to accept it, that we have expectations for progressive policies and expedited procedures. We also include an expectation of transparent communication with the public and within organizations, values that include integrity and transparency, and ranked objectives such as, our number one ranked one actually, is provide sustainable and reliable services throughout departments, 
And our third one is transparent government, governance and uh, citizen-focused services. So we have a few policy and bylaws on our agenda tonight. And as a council, we put these in place to, they are how we are to govern. That's why we put them in place. They also provide the rules of operation for administration team to carry out the day-to-day -day service and operations. So the more clear and concise we can make sure our policies and bylaws are moving forward, the easier it is for our administrative staff to expeditely carry out their duties and not have to delay uh, responses or service because they have to come to council to get clear understanding of vague or ambiguous or gray and mis like misinterpretation of what a policy or bylaw may actually be meaning. So the clearer we can make our policies and bylaws, I think the better off we are for meeting that target uh, for transparent governance and citizen-focused services, as well as allowing our administration and staff to do their work in an efficient, timely manner without always having that day-to-day -day stuff potentially coming to council to be decided. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Memorial. Oh, somebody else have their hand up? Oh, sorry, Councillor Fletcher. So I was just reviewing it, and the one thing I would go over with it is just double check our um, grammar and and consistency for capitals and and periods in it. It's there's periods in some and not in all, so just uh, fine tune it before we print. Okay. Go ahead, um, CEO Pool. Sorry, I couldn't find my raise hand on the shrunken deal. But anyways, yes, we will have, uh, this is still in draft form, so we are going to get, and we'll provide it to council, a draft booklet, and it'll be colorful, and the grammar will be checked, and the periods will be checked, and all of that stuff. Perfect, thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's Carrie. Uh, just a comment. As nice as this for, for all of us to do it independently, it's also, as Mr. Poole knows, it's also link integral that we get together as a team and go over it also, like a cow meeting or even a special meeting. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, 10, 10.1. Resolve, resolve the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General. Mm -hmm. Point. Point of order, the I think 8.8 is missed. How did I miss that? <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Uh, whereas the town of Swan River committed $40,000 from the Crime Prevention Reserve towards the Community Surveillance Project in 2023, and whereas the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce has requested to control and operate the Community Surveillance Project, therefore be it resolved that the $40,000 committed to the Community Surveillance Project be granted to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, just uh, confirming that uh, we do have an agreement with the Chamber of Commerce for that project along with the uh, funds for the criminal forfeiture grant that was received to go along with that. That's in the works. It's in the works, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Medwood. My um, <coughs> question or comment is more or less in the same lines. Do, are we putting that agreement in place prior to releasing the funds, like I know we're approving the funds tonight, but do we need, are we wanting that agreement in place prior to actually signing the check over to the Chamber of Commerce? These funds don't need that. It would be the, the criminal forfeiture uh, funds that would need to have the agreement or until we receive the information from the province on the details of that. Am I correct with that, Mr. Poole? Uh, well, we we can do as council wishes if they if they want an agreement written agreement in place for the forty thousand for the for the surveillance project, then we cannot release the funds until we have a written signed agreement. Uh, if, but that needs to be added in amended into this resolution. 
uh, for the $10,000 for the vehicle, that's already been taken care of. So the answer is no. If council wishes to add in a piece on the condition that a written agreement be signed, we will not be releasing the 40000 until a written agreement is signed. Council Portia. Can we make an amendment or can I make a motion to amend this resolution? Um, so therefore be it resolved the 40000 committed to the community surveillance project be granted to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce for the purchase of equipment. So that's where it's going to. This forty thousand dollars is committed to the equipment being purchased. Like CTV equipment, right? Make yeah. Sure so the monitors, the cameras, the, the hardware, the all those things. The equipment's that's, a little vague. To me. Yeah. So, so uh, go ahead, Mister. Hey, if you update, it should be fixed or amended. No. Do Do we need to have a seconder to uh, amend? I believe so, yeah. We need to move second and vote it on. Yes, so we need to have it moved and a seconder and then vote on it. So I can, can I move it? You can move it. I'll move it. And then do I have a seconder? Okay. And so that's Councillor uh, Bobbick that has seconded. Now I'm going to see where that guy on there. Um, you said you've. So you're adding so to uh, so we have a resolution to make the amendment. All in favor of the amendment. Well, okay. Once I hear the words, so that you're carried. The words. So now, no, oh, it's not as written. Should be the purchase of CCT or surveillance equipment, citizen yeah. equipment. Yeah, it's it's there. If you look, if you go into the resolution, it's it's there. Is that the update? Just tell me what to refresh, and then I'll read it again. Uh, yeah, you can refresh right now. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to read the last line. Therefore, uh, be result of the forty thousand dollars committed to this uh, community surveillance project be granted to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce for the purchase of. It's not there yet. It's still not there. I was Is thinking there maybe one, I, oh. CCTV equipment? I, I could, that's what your intentions are. So the CCTV equipment. You see CCTV. Discussion. Yeah. Further discussion. Mm -hmm. All in favor? It's carried. That was the amendment. No, it's the resolution as a whole. No, we voted on that. Mm -hmm. We went all day, we just had a discussion and we made the motion to change. So now we have to do the actual Full resolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just do it. No, we, did. we voted on the amendment. Yeah. Not on the full resolution. Okay, I sorry. Um, okay, so if that was the, the vote on the um, amendment, Perfect. then uh, we'll carry the vote on the new resolution as it stands. So further discussion on the resolution. All in favor? It's carried. Now we can get to ten point one. Resolving accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. Yes. General accounts checks number three zero seven one six two, number three zero seven six three, totaling one hundred sixty-five thousand fifty-five dollars and twenty cents is listed on schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5362 to number 5365, totaling $102,786.86 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $94,952.22 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Um, yes, I'm seeing quite a few uh Amazon purchases that look like they are uh, materials easily acquired within our own community with, from our business, local businesses. Can we put out a reminder again to our directors and administrative teams to be shopping local for? We, we, we do price check, but 
technically I can discipline them for doing that. Moose Jaw is local. We cannot pass a policy. It's against the Northwest Trade Partnership Agreement. I guess that's under over 25,000. So we don't have that policy currently, but they are, they're, they're informing me when they do it. They do know that uh, we are looking for the best price possible. And if, I guess we should be passing a policy if that's, you know, it continues every single meeting. So if, if council wants us to do that, as long as it's within the, the NWTP agreement, uh, we should be looking into that. Uh, council member. Uh, in response to that, our procurement policy does state best value and defines best value. You're not going to get better value for your dollar than shopping local where we can under the $25,000 because our local businesses, they support our community, they support our rec programs, they support our nonprofits, they employ our citizens, they pay taxes. You're not going to get that from shopping at Amazon, Canadian Tire, or Walmart. So we do have it in our policy to get best value and you're not going to beat that value for two bucks less uh, Amazon or online. That okay. is my opinion. Further discussion? All I won't argue that. All in favor? <laughs> it's carried. Uh, 10.2. Result of the financial statements for the eight months ending August 31st, 2023, be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morial, seconded by Council Medwood. Discussion? So is there any way like we can find out at certain periods of the year where certain departments are, like if they've used 85% of their budget by now or they've used 60%, when do we know that? Do we not, do we, or do we get like a flag goes up when they're, they're over budget? Uh, it's kind of in, in here, but CFO Godita. Uh, the financial statements show the percentage of the actual amounts compared to the budget for every department, every line item. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Council Medlin. Um, yes, that's what I usually go through and ask numerous yeah. questions as to are we on are we in the ballpark range? <laughs> because when I see one that, for example, says 139.9%, it makes me wonder. <laughs> Um, yes. What is your question? Um, I don't know because I just randomly opened it up to find it for yeah. Councillor Bob. It, it starts at at least page four where the percentages come in. I didn't actually have a chance to review this prior to the meeting. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor White. All in favor. All in favor? It's carried. And actually, page three. 10.3. Whereas section uh, 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on September the 5th and 15th, 2023 be made to the 2023 property and business tax rolls with resulting increases totaling $12,809.37 and the resulting reductions totaling $339.15. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11 bylaws, 11.1. Resolve the bylaw number 9, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to regulate the giving out of grants, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor uh, Medwood. Yes, being that this is, I believe, our third reading, um, do we have an advertising? Oh campaign in mind. I'm thinking I might not get that answer from CAO pool right away, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. 
Would you click the uh, the power button restart thing? I just looked over and it was restarting. Yeah, I just seen that too. Yeah. What happened? Um, so did I? We, we could take note of that and we'll find out. But I think that, we'll, uh, that was the plan. So. The, there's a three parts kind of to this. Okay. Uh, one, I want to know if and when we'll be notifying all past and current. Sorry, I was just wondering, yeah. should we just take like a five minute recess to let it reboot? Yeah, because we're recording. Okay. I'm sorry, we'll go ahead. Okay. We'll it probably we'll just. just okay. Yeah. Where? Sorry about that. We were in discussion on 11.1. So we left off with who? Me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, CAO Pool, this is pretty much for you. Um, I was wondering if and when we will be notifying past and current recipients to give them a copy of the new bylaw and highlighting the primary changes we want them to be aware of, such as that February 28th deadline, the application that needs to come in, financials, so they're on yes. top of it. And do we have an advertising campaign of some sort in mind to kind of get this out to the community and be communicating with the community on this new updated bylaw, as well as our office staff so they know what to expect? Uh, yeah, we will be sending letters along with the bylaw out as soon as it's passed, and then we're going to send it in the new year as well so that the the previous recipients know. And we will be putting it on our website, Facebook, all of that deal. We can put it in our town page for people to come and, uh, and get available copies of the bylaw at the office. Okay. Perfect. For, for the will, the, uh, sorry, will the application be available online, the website? Yeah, we can make it uh, uh, printable, or not printable, but they can fill it out online, yeah. Perfect. Okay, for the discussion, it's a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. That was unanimous. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know if it's Mr. Poole or Mr. Harvey, but he is. Okay, he's on. okay, sounds good. Okay, uh, 11.2, resolve the bylaw number 6, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend the unsightly bylaw be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I have a few points that I came across when I read it, um, and I'm assuming some of this might come forward if we're bumping this to the cow and the upcoming cal. Um, one is some grammatical. In the recommendation, you reference section 6.2 with regards to um, uh, the vehicles, but in the bylaw itself, it's 7.2. So I'm assuming that's the section that you're meeting. But uh, the question I have is, and I think it came forward once already, but do we even have the ability to check registration because it references a vehicle that's been registered within the last eight months? Do we have the ability to do that? I think that uh, Chief Fedorchuk answered that question last week. And uh, I thought it was no. Chief? We, we we can't get a list from MPI, but we can, we are able to see if it's just going to take more work, we'll do it individually, to find out if that vehicle is registered. Because I, my takeaway from that discussion is we don't have the ability, like they'll, they might tell us whether it's registered or not registered, but they're not going to tell us when it was last registered. And in which case, I'm wondering if we need to change the wording in there so it is reflective of what we actually have the ability to do. We, we could, or sorry, go ahead. Chief Fedorcha. So in our current process, when we do a uh, search request, so a request for uh, insured status on an MPI vehicle, uh, we will only receive the owner's name and address uh, or a message that says it is not insured through MPI. We don't get uh, a timeline when it was insured last or that kind of stuff. It's privacy, we can't get that. That's why in the new registrations, there's no longer any addresses on the registrations 
uh, themselves. Okay, uh, CL Pool. Uh, we can we can propose just they they need to provide proof of registration, and if they don't, they're deemed unregistered. Yeah, we'll just need to change it to be reflective to what we can actually work with. Yeah. Like, no, thank you for that for pointing that out. Councilor Boychuk. I'm just wondering what the purpose was for the eight month thing. Like, I like that change. I think that's much more sensible, but I just didn't know. Uh, I'll be honest. We, we didn't want a year. Felt six months was, we, we, there is no, there is no data based answer for that question. My, uh, to, uh, Deputy Mayor Memorial. Uh, just a reminder, this is first reading. Uh, this will go to a cow meeting after that and public opinions where we can uh, go through the items one at a time and bring out all the grammatical and, and whatnot. Uh, this is first reading just to get it on the table for discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Go ahead. Just a couple more because they might as well deal with it before the next reading. Um, there are some numbering issues because we there was a change made and then we have a replication of, I think it's numbers eight through 11 are repeated. Yeah, we will, but, yeah, we will, we will make those changes, yeah. Again, it's, it's a first reading so that we will get those cleaned up. Okay, well I have a few other points, but if it's coming to the next cow, then I can save them and reserve them for the cow. I just figured this way they could be tackled before the count. Or you can add an email to send through Mr. Poole as well. Okay. Did you have something there, uh, CL Poole? Uh, no, no, just that there's the, the, the draft that you have is, it has all of our changes on it, everything. So the, the eight through 11 is the, the old eight through 11, then there's the, the new eight through 11, but uh, anything in red is gone, but it's, it's, it's very, it's in a very, raw draft right now right okay all in favor it's carried 11.3 resolve the bylaw number 8 2023 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend uh, the parking uh, bylaw be read a first time moved by Councilor Medwood seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. discussion uh, yes, it's a first reading, and yet in our appendix, <coughs> the reference is a request from Donna Burkhart dated back in 2020, and I know I've been asking for it since I got to the table, but I don't see in anything in there pertaining to parking passes. And I just want to put out there before our second reading that one of our objectives is transparent governance and citizen-focused services. So. I think we need to listen to what our citizens are asking for and consider moving forward with some parking passes because there are some businesses that operate on streets that have a two hour parking limit but they provide services that may extend beyond two hours. So I think it's fair to establish some sort of a parking pass system so that their clients won't be ticketed for using their services but I don't see that in here. So if that's something we can work on for the cow and or second reading, that would be appreciated. Right now, that's the opinion of yourself. And if council is not in agreement or if you want to bring a resolution uh, to add that, then you may do so. But um, that's a discussion of council and not to be just added to instruct administration to make any changes. That has to be from the will of council. So that can be debated or discuss, not debated, but discussed at the next call meeting. Okay. okay. Further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, just the grammatical in there as well. There's a duplicate. There, 15A shows up three times and 15B shows up twice. Okay. And as Calper and CO Poole said, it is in rough draft and they will go through that and, and uh, clean that up. Yeah, the, the, the point of that was for council to see the changes that we've made. Right. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11 point, or sorry, 11.4. Yeah, 
resolved in bylaw number 11, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, for the purposes of imposing a tax on accommodations to be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Uh, discussion? Councillor Boy, uh, Bobbick, sorry. Uh, so this imposing tax on accommodation to be read first night. Would that be that the tax will be directed to recreation? Was that the thoughts of council at that time to, for imposing this? That would be the decision of council once this is passed. Okay. Or if it does get passed. Exactly. Okay. But you can keep that in your in your mind for in a call meeting or whatever, but council will have to have that discussion. There's been a lot of different thoughts about what that might look like. Uh, Councilor White. Uh, it, it, they're, they're subject to a, nearly an unfair geography thing here. In, in our place, if we need, we can bark across the street. There's always a spot and in front of our, These people can only bark in front of their own place. What, what, no, are, you, what are you talking about? I'm sorry. This proposed 20-foot uh, proposed parking status, all those guys in that inside rain at Parkdale, they can only park right in front of their houses. We're on a different you're, you're on resolution, Councillor. We're, we're on the accommodation. Uh, we can do that oh, at the cow. Come on. We can do that at the cow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, I know it's a first year. Uh, I thought we were talking about this. I admit I read this one quickly, so I didn't read it thoroughly for understanding. But when I this? skimmed through it, I did not see anything that accounted for or excluded short-term billets for the Stampeders, because what I kept seeing was anything less than 60 days, but I believe the Stampeders during their preseason hockey and whatnot may be looking to billet short, on a short-term basis. They're receiving funds, so I'm just making sure our accommodation tax accounts for those um, or excludes those billet providers so that they're not um, affected by this? Uh, CEO Poole. Yeah, I guess before I answer anything, this this draft is made up of a lot of different bylaws over the country, so this is, this. we don't feel strongly that, well, I guess if I was to pass an accommodation bylaw, this would be it, but uh, you know, this is this is for council to debate at a cow, so we can we can debate things like that whether billets should be included or not uh, at the cow. No, no offense, but just take this. This is the very first draft that we've we've attempted this, but uh, it's built of a lot of different bylaws, and and we can mold it to where we want it to in the committee of the whole process. Right. For the discussion, did you have something? Yeah. Okay. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, 13, resolved that pursuant to sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Balvik. All in favor? It's personnel. It's carried. We are in camera. Uh, nothing rising out of camera, so we'll move on to uh, members' privilege. I'll start with Councillor Boychuk. I have nothing. Okay. Councillor White. I had something, but now that I'm scared now. Uh, Swanbell Outdoors, 21st of this month, they'll spend 50000 bucks plus in our town after our dinner. If you want tickets, see me. If you want to donate an auction item, see me. All the money stays in the valley. Okay. Councillor Bobbick. A uh, couple questions, actually, just for clarifications, I guess. When a person buys a plot at the cemetery, uh, you purchase that plot, and then, say, a year, two years, or how many years, if somebody wants to put an urn on top of that plot, there is, is there a charge for that besides the charge of it in terms It's an of opening, right? Opening, opening and closing, closed. but yeah. there is no charge for the plot itself. That's correct. So there's a purchase and then there's an open close, but there isn't a second purchase. There's only one purchase. Okay. okay. So 
Uh, just a question on, uh, we did a demolition on uh, fifth tier. So the price of it, the scale, it went across the scale so the, the town has collected money for that off the price of that job but at the same time the town is a percentage with the RM so that will look like income for the landfill so does a percentage in order to sell that land do you figure that out that the price of that will be included on the sale of that land what are you referring to well are we 50 50 partners with the income went to the landfill, right? Yes. Okay. The, so, the full amount of the contract would go on the... The full amount? Take that, my question to that. So. Okay. Well, that's what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, right? yeah, because whatever went to the scale is irrelevant to that Okay, property. that's what I mean, just the contract. So, he was... But was he paid the contract price and then he... He sent an invoice for the full amount and then there's an agreement to reduce it by the number of scale. Okay. There was no just change now. The okay. Full demolition. That explains it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I will be unavailable till October fifth. Go have a nice holiday. Thank you. Bring us back some lobster. Okay. Uh, October fifth. <laughs> Councillor uh, Medlin. Uh, just to let everybody know that services for seniors will be continuing with their coffee and a chat um, in Benito and Swan River. Um, for sure, moving forward through to March. And that this Saturday they have an age-friendly presentation and trade show at the Veterans Hall. So there will be some speakers from uh, mental health, Alzheimer's, uh, Get Better Together and PMH, uh, Manitoba Lung Association, and also um, some information on Lifeline and recognizing the fact that it's been in our community for 25 years and it is free uh, for those who attend and if you are part of the trade show there is also going to be Maggie's barbecue for ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor White. Did it? All right, I did you for you. <laughs> the dangers of a six head. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morgan. Uh, nothing for me. I take that back because I shouldn't have uh, let him uh, speak a second time, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, for me, not much. Um, all right. It's okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Go. No, it's okay. I, I meant to say Council Paul the last sign, but uh, sorry. Go. No, all's good. Um, just, uh, you know what, this weekend the San Peters have their home opener, so just a big, huge um, wishing them all the best. Um, and this game, and then um, also just a, a reminder that October 30th is our National Reconciliation Walk. It's a Saturday, and hopefully everybody can attend. There'll be lots of stuff happening now. I think that's it for right now. Question does that start? It starts at 11 o'clock at, uh, at the Pension Center. Center. And we walk all the way down to the co op parking lot and back, and then there's a free lunch after that. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Just the co op, that's it. Mm -hmm. We have quite a few elderly um, watching us. So. Okay, fair mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. I was thinking maybe a loop around town or something, but okay. No, that's cool. That's, that's, so oh, that's work. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it'll be good though. Perfect, thank you. Uh, for myself, uh, next week I will be away. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be chosen by the AMM to attend the Alberta Municipal Convention. So I'll be gone away to Edmonton to take in the convention in Alberta and see what they do different than our own convention. So I'll be traveling with Vice President uh, Brad Saluk. So um, yeah, it should be a good time. And Nick is coming with us too. So oh my God. We're looking forward to spending some time uh, rubbing shoulders with different people and learning a little bit about what they do in Alberta. So. Uh, there was something else I was going to mention. I can't remember what the heck it was now. Ugh, I can't remember. But anyways, it don't matter. Uh, Mr. Harvey. Um, all my items are... You have nothing there. further? Nothing further. No, uh, no announcements to make or anything like that? Uh, nothing specific. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Garita. Uh, no, I have nothing to report. Okay. 
and sail pool. I'm good to go. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, resolved in this regular meeting of council now adjourned at 8.45 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, 8.46, I said, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.